guys, so today is June 25th and I am flying out of Tampa Airport for the first time in six months since the pandemic hit um, six months ago. Uh, well, no, four months ago. So um, I'm flying Southwest. They say that um, they're not booking middle seats. So the plane should maybe be like, uh, I don't know, half full. So I'm going to document my travels here from Tampa airport flying into Nebraska. I am going to visit uh, some friends and family and see what the flying experience is like coming out of Tampa. Let's see, is it on? And it should be ex uh, interesting. I haven't been to the airport in forever in a day. Um, so I have no idea what it's gonna be like, but we're going to document this to see what it is like to travel Obviously, I'm only going domestically. Um, I know some people have flown internationally. I had a couple of friends go to Mexico, and that didn't seem to be a problem. Then I had one of my friends that her ex went to Indonesia, which I'm actually kind of surprised. Because um, I didn't think that um, borders were open. So... It should be interesting to see how this goes. Um, but like I said, we're gonna try to GoPro it. Um, I'm gonna hook up my GoPro to my backpack and see what it's like going through security. I do have TSA pre-check, so that will make it faster. Um, Hillsborough County and Pinellas County did pass ordinances just the other day that everyone has to wear face masks. You didn't have to before. I think you did in the airport, but now it doesn't matter. Everyone's supposed to out in public. So I have my face mask. Um, actually, well, it's just a face covering. So it's just fabric because it's easier to breathe because as you can see on my thing here, it's 91 degrees in Florida and it's really freaking hot closed. Is everything closed? Huh. All those levels say closed. Please touch read for ticket. That's interesting, so they don't have that many spaces open. <laughs> well, so we're in economy parking here. And they literally only have three levels open, levels one, two, and three. I guess that's just because <laughs> there's not that many people flying. Um, so yeah, look, there's 322 parking spots open. And this side used to always be closed, but now it's open. <clears throat> So hopefully we can find a parking spot in here. So this must be orange. Oh, where's the other the elevator? Okay. Let's try to find a spot by the elevator. Do, do. Actually, you know what? There's a bunch over here. Let's just go. Yeah, wow, this is like so dead. Normally, parking at Tampa would be completely full. <laughs> so, and then we gotta take the tram over to check in to Southwest. Although I already checked in, I just gotta like drop my bags.
So yeah, so this is my face mask. It's just a cloth thing that I'm gonna wear that basically goes up over here. It's a lot thinner so I can breathe. Um, it's basically like a cat throwing up rainbows. Um, but it's gonna be hot. I don't know how I'm gonna run around the airport like this. I'm already hot and I'm in the air conditioning, but let's see how it goes. So I parked in the economy lot at the Tampa airport. There was tons of parking spots open, um, only three levels out of two entire garages that were actually allowing you to park. I didn't see any other people while I parked. I didn't see anybody in the elevators that I'm going down now from the second floor in the economy parking in Tampa airport to the moving escalator. Uh, there was no people really at all in the garage. Obviously there was cars parked there. Um, so there are some people that are parking, you know, in long term, but I didn't see anybody going through the garage. Um, I didn't see anybody in the elevators, so it is definitely, you know, still slow, not a lot of people there. So I didn't put my mask on yet because it was hot. It was actually 102 degrees. There was one person. That's like the first person I saw. <laughs> um, so I wasn't putting my mask on because it was 102 degrees. We had a heat advisory in Florida. So now here I'm waiting for the tram. As you can see, there is literally zero people. There's not one other person waiting for the tram to go over to the terminal. When the tram came, there were a few people on it and everybody was wearing uh, face masks. So I did put my mask on once I was in the tram. Then I went over to Southwest to check in. And as you can tell, there are a lot more people um, once I got to the actual terminal um, but everyone is wearing face masks um, actually I didn't see anybody in the terminal that was not wearing face masks until I went up um, here so I dropped my bag and now I'm just going up to the gate theirs was a group of people waiting for someone that was the first group of people I saw without face masks but as I'm walking through to get to the gates, as you can tell, there's still not a lot of people. Um, there's a few, but it's still pretty dead for uh, Tampa Airport. So there's a store. There's hardly anybody there. Now, like I said, it's a <clears throat> pretty long walk from the parking garage economy to get over to the gates. I stopped there to adjust my mask. I was getting really hot at that point. Now here I'm going to get over to the gate but you see that little sign thing where it said gate c usually there was a person there that was checking your id and those people were gone so you don't have to check your id to get on the tram to go over to the gate so now we're going to tsa check and i actually have tsa pre-check so as you can see there's like nobody waiting in line there's just a few people ahead of me um, I got to go to the TSA pre-check line. There was literally only one guy ahead of me um, to go through security. There was literally nobody, so you don't have to come that far in advance. Um, now, the funny thing is I'm obviously recording during this entire time. He checks my ID. I go through, and I still have my GoPro on while it goes through security. And the funny thing is my bag actually got stuck. It got stuck on the rollers when it was going through the scanner and the one of the TSA agents comes over and shoves my bag through. Now, if you have a GoPro and you're recording, it actually has a red blinking light. So this whole time I'm recording, the light is blinking and people can see that it's blinking and that it's recording. And I really thought I was going to get in trouble at this point. I don't know if you can record going through TSA security but I think it's hilarious. So the bag's going through the scanner right now. I really thought she was gonna stop it and say something about it, but she didn't. And the bag comes through. <laughs> I get my bag, I put it on, and I'm on my merry little way. So now this is the Seagate uh, for Southwest at Tampa Airport. Now there are a lot more people here. Um, it seems like Southwest is doing a lot of flights um, from what I can tell. I had a friend fly out from Tampa the day after I did, and he was in a different gate, and it was completely dead. 
Now, only about half the stores are open. So, like, there was one restaurant that was open, and there was, like, the store where you could get, like, you know, water and magazines and stuff. But you can see everybody sitting here at the gate waiting. They were doing the social distancing. Um, every other seat, everyone's wearing face masks. I did decide to get a snack to take on the plane um, because they were open to get some food. Because to get on the airplane um, at Southwest, they are requiring you to wear face masks. And then they're leaving the middle seat open. So I got a drink and I got a snack. So I figured, you know, if I got tired of wearing the mask, um, if I eat, then obviously you don't have to wear a mask when you're eating. But I had on the, the cat face mask um, first, but like running through the airport, you know, from the economy to get to the gate is about, I mean, it's like a mile or so. And it was so hot that day. I took off the cat one because I was just sweating and dying to death. And good thing is I brought, I had three masks total. So I had another mask like this lady here that, you know, is more just like the surgical one. So while I was in the terminal, I wasn't wearing it just because I was so hot. Now we're waiting to board. Now the interesting thing about Southwest is they did change their boarding, you know, routine before you would line up, you know, rows A, 1 through 60 on one side and whatever on the other side and then Bs. Well, now they're not doing that. They're only um, boarding 10 people at a time. So we were basically just standing all around waiting. You don't line up next to the pillars like you normally do. Um, instead, they're just, you know, calling out like A, 1 through 10. And then you go up and then A, 10 through 20. So now we're getting uh, ready to board the plane. Um, you know, it's a little bit hard to practice social distancing when you're, you know, loading onto a plane. But once again, everybody had face masks. They said you had to have your face mask on before you went up to load on the plane. So they weren't really strict in the terminal. Like you didn't have to have it while you're sitting in the terminal waiting. But you had to have it on before you entered the gangway. And if you didn't have a mask, then Southwest agents said that they would actually give you one. Um, but pretty much everybody had them, all different types. Um, I would say 99% of people had them in the terminal. So now we're getting on the plane. Um, and like I said, um, they didn't, they weren't letting you sit in middle seats. So that was nice. Um, actually I appreciated the extra, um, leg room. Um, so you're not all jam packed on the plane. So I got a seat, uh, pretty close up and then you can see as I turn around, there's one lady here that has on the full hazmat suit and the shield. That was the only person during my travels that 100% had on all the protective gear. So now you see I have on that face mask. I switched it out because I was just too hot. I was way too hot with the cat one that went all the way around my neck. So now this is um, my layover. This plane uh, went from Tampa to um, Washington, D.C. So now I have a layover in Washington, D.C. And we're getting off the plane to go to Washington, D.C. And I'll show you some of that airport. Now, thankfully, my gate was right next to the gate that I was getting off on. It was right next to the gate that I was getting on. So you can see all the workers here at the airport. They all have face masks on. The pilots are wearing them. The um, flight attendants are wearing them. I mean, honestly, it was an overall pleasant experience. Um, with Southwest. I know some of the airlines people have been complaining about like Allegiant. They're just packing everyone on the plane and they're not requiring masks. Um, but I, I actually, it wasn't a bad flying experience with Southwest. Um, I've always enjoyed flying with them. So even during a pandemic, um, it was pleasant. So now this is, um, Washington DC. I believe it's the Reagan, um, airport. And you can tell they do have uh, restaurants open here. Um, this one was fairly busy as well. There was quite a few people. But once again, if people weren't eating, they all had their face masks on. So, look, there's my terminal too. I got off on three and my connecting was, was two. So, yeah, there are a few people in the D.C. airport. 
Um, they had, from what I could tell, everything was open, but I didn't walk around since my gate was so closed. So, you know, their kiosks were open, the restaurants were open. We're in Tampa, half of them were open. So, you know, if you need food, you might want to bring it before you go, because you just don't know if, if you know, like something's gonna be open. Because um, I think some of the gates in Tampa, if they don't have lots of flights going out, you know, the restaurants are just shut down. So, and then went into the bathroom. <laughs> I did not film this entire part. <laughs> But um, I just wanted to, well, I needed obviously go to the bathroom and check it out. So now this is, we're getting ready to board now to go on to Omaha, Nebraska. This in DC was a little bit more chaotic. They, the flight attendants kept trying to get people to line up on yellow dots, um, how we normally would, but six feet apart and then load on the plane. And it was just really confusing. People didn't know what was going on. Then the other flight attendant said, sit down if you're not actively boarding. And, you know, I don't like to sit down before I'm going to sit on a plane for two hours. And everybody kept going up at the wrong time. And they weren't very organized um, at this airport. In Tampa, it was easy. People just stood around and they said A1 through 10 and then you walk up. I don't know why they were trying to get people to stand on these yellow dots. See, like now they're they're calling my... Uh, section so I'm gonna go up and stand you can kind of see these yellow dots here and they wanted you to stand on the yellow dots before they called your row this lady here is confused too because you know with Southwest you usually line up a 1 through 30 on one side of the pillars and then 30 through 60 on the other side but I mean come on like this is just a weird thing so we weren't in order I was 42 and people were going in front of me like it just whatever it doesn't matter um so there's the pilot and one of the flight attendants you can see they had their their face masks on and then i got a seat um close up again now we have arrived in omaha nebraska and we're deboarding the plane um so this is really interesting because nebraska airport was dead as you can tell, there is nobody in there. The only people in the airport are coming from the plane, you know, that I was just on. All the restaurants are shut down. All the kiosks are shut down. None of the other gates are open. It was just eerie. It was, like, so bizarre. And I know Omaha isn't a big airport anyway. They have gate A and B. But you can see over here to the left, the TSA, nobody is going through check-in nothing is open everything is shut down they have one TSA agent just sitting there then there was one employee cleaning like there's just nobody in this airport at all it's bizarre so when I fly out of Omaha you know I'm not gonna be able to stop and get a coffee or food or nothing um because <laughs> there's just nothing open there's just not enough flights coming out of a small airport like this but it was just bizarre to walk through. Like over to the left there is like normally a food court area. Zero was open. Um, there's a few people up here that are waiting to pick up, you know, people coming off the plane. But absolutely nothing is open at all. Or at least in Tampa, half the stuff was open. In DC looked like a lot, like the Omaha Steaks kiosk, that's closed down. I mean, all these people walking here are on were from my plane so I don't think there was any flights going out that day um, at all so kind of eerie um, but you know then you don't have the crowds um, they had four people um, unloading the bags off the plane in Omaha and they unloaded the bags you know like super fast so you can see down here on the lower level, the ticketing agents, they're not open. There's literally just nobody in the airport. <laughs> so dead. So dead and kind of eerie, but, you know, people still aren't flying a lot. And with the coronavirus cases spiking again and going through a second wave or whatever's going on I have no idea but um, 
definitely the flying experience with Southwest was pleasurable. I didn't think it, it went bad at all. May I have your attention, please? The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend social distancing to stop the spread of germs. Please keep six feet of distance from others when waiting for your bags or gathering in any area of the airport. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was really hot wearing the, the face mask when you're running through the airport, but it's not bad when you're on the plane. You have to wear it on Southwest the whole duration of the plane unless you're eating, you know, or drinking. And I didn't really mind it because then you're sitting there and you have the air blowing on you, so it wasn't so hot. I mean, your ears do get a little sore from, you know, wearing the surgical type mask. But um, I think when I leave, I'm going to try to wear the, the cat mask again. So my ears don't hurt, since I won't be running through Tampa Airport. Omaha is much smaller. You just go check in and go to your gate. So um, I'm going to try that on the way back. But you can see here I'm waiting for my bags. And there's nobody. No bags, no people. <laughs> just nothing <clears throat> in the terminal, terminal at all. But <clears throat> honestly, overall... I think it was not a bad flying experience, to be honest. Everybody was wearing masks. Nobody was making a big deal about it. Nobody was weird about it. Everyone was pretty much courteous, you know. Um, and definitely, I would honestly fly again. I don't know if I go on some of the other airlines. The ones that are just, I think even American Air said now... Uh, which today is now June 27th, 2020, that they're just going to start filling up the planes full and not requiring masks. So I don't know if I'd use one of those airlines, to be honest with you, but um, Southwest did a good job. It was pleasurable. Um, I would just recommend bringing, you know, multiple masks with you because if it is hot because it's summertime and you sweat through them, you know, or just kind of find out the different ones that feel better, you know, on your face, on your ears, um, you know, what makes sense for you. But that is my experience flying during COVID-19 in 2020 from the Tampa airport to the DC airport and on to the Omaha airport. Yeah, but we'll be told at the owner's expense. 